नमस्ते दोस्तों आपका वैल्यू एजुकेटेड चैनल में स्वागत है जहां आप सीखते हो स्टॉक मार्केट में इन्वेस्ट करके आप कैसे वैसे बना सकते हो तो मेरा नाम है शशांक और ये वीडियो है हम एक माइक्रो कैप कंपनी के बारे में डिस्कस करेंगे जो लगभग 100 परसेंट से ज्यादा ग्रो कर रहा है ईयर ऑन ईयर उनके रेवेन्यूज में तो ये जो कंपनी है उसके बिजनेस मॉडल के बारे में हम मैनेजमेंट से जानेंगे ये क्यू सेशन होगा काफी एक डिटेल सेशन है इसके अलावा अपॉर्चुनिटी साइज क्या है आगे जाके कंपनी के ग्रोथ के क्या प्लान है इसके बारे में डिस्कस करेंगे तो ये कंपनी का नाम है फैंटम डिजिटल इफेक्ट्स करके रिसेंटली इनका एक आईपीओ आया था ये एक एसएमई बोर्ड पे लिस्टेड कंपनी है जो एक विजुअल इफेक्ट्स की कंपनी है टू डी थ्री डी एनिमेशन वो आप देखोगे तो बनाते हैं विजुअल इफेक्ट्स करते हैं इसके अलावा मोशन ग्राफिक्स करते हैं और ये कंपनी ने काफी जो फेमस मूवीज आई थी रिसेंटली उसके रिलेटेड विजुअल इफेक्ट्स का काम किया है जैसे कि ब्रह्मास्त्र के लिए किया था ट्रिपल आर है बाहुबली है ट्रांसफॉर्मर्स है एवेंजर्स है ये मूवीज के लिए कंपनी ने विजुअल इफेक्ट्स मोशन ग्राफिक्स या टू डी थ्री एनिमेशन का काम किया था तो ऐसे ही स्मॉल एंड माइक्रो साइज के कंपनीज के बारे में डिटेल में जानकारी लेने के लिए वैल्यू एडुकेटर चैनल को जरूर सब्सक्राइब कीजिए एंड बेल आइकन पर क्लिक कीजिए ताकि ऐसे जो वीडियोस है आपको आगे जाके भी मिलते रहे तो अभी हम फैंटम डिजिटल इफेक्ट्स के मैनेजमेंट के साथ में एक डिटेल के सेशन जो है उसकी शुरुआत करते हैं सो वी हैव सटन क्वेश्चन सो इफ यू कैन एक्सप्लेन अबाउट द बिजनेस इनिशियली एंड देन वी कैन गो हेड एंड डिस्कस अबाउट दटन क्वेश्चन yeah so uh, <clears throat> so uh, good afternoon everyone uh, i am vijay atpadraj i am the founder of uh, phantom fx i uh, am phantom digital fx uh, limited uh, so uh, phantom is uh, a service uh, company uh, we are into visual effects and animation so uh, you know we are uh, providing our services for movies commercials uh, commercials in the sense advertisements and uh, games <coughs> animations animation movies you know all kind of uh, uh, digital imagery creation that we do actually right. uh, our primary focus is uh, into movie visual effects so when it comes to movie visual effects uh, there is a major difference between um, uh, visual effects and animation so uh, whatever you see uh, in the movie uh, jurassic park you know where where you see uh, real people you know interacting with the uh, cgi animated animals that right. is called the visual effects which is like you know we are combining uh, both the real life and uh, you know the computer generated uh, imagery and uh, making it into one movie so that is called visual effects and uh, animation movie is something like uh, a toy story or a movie a recent uh, you know kind you know kind of stuff that is uh, completely uh, computer generated uh, imagery animation animated content so that is uh, what is called animated movie <coughs> so these are uh, two major differences between visual effects and animation and uh, we are into visual effects we specialize into the visual effects but we also do uh, animation uh, content but not in a scale of creating a whole movie uh, so we have been creating animated content uh, you know in a, in a short duration timelines like for commercials advertisements you know we have been doing that because uh, to create a complete movie we need a you know a huge uh, number of team and uh, you know that is a total different ball game together so we are right now into uh, uh, visual effects and we are providing services of visual effects right so uh, my myself uh, you know i started uh, you know my <clears throat> when i was studying my passion is uh, to create something uh, similar to jurassic park and uh, right. uh, star wars and stuff like that you know so i was like too much uh, you know impressed and inspired by all those uh, films and uh, that's what i wanted to do uh, right from my you know 10th grade and that is what i pursued uh, so uh, once i finished my uh, college that is um, computer applications so what i did is like uh, i started uh, you know doing uh, you know digging uh, more in animation and visual effects and i i am a self taught uh, person uh, initially so i i uh, you know learned so many things myself and i uh, started doing uh, domestic uh, advertisements for local tv channels and all then my you know i then i realized that uh, i wanted to become a visual effects artist and i had to educate myself for that and then i moved to uh, chennai uh, that is the city you know capital of tamil nadu 
So uh, I was down south. I was from down south of uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, from a rural area. So then I moved to uh, Chennai and then I uh, joined a college there. I did my post-graduation in visual effects. And then I got an opportunity to work for a uh, film uh, visual effects company. And then from there, my career started. So uh, my total experience, uh, uh, you know, till now it is around uh, 20 years of experience uh, in, uh, you know, animation and visual effects. So I started my career uh, with a small company and then I moved on to uh, uh, a bigger company uh, called Prime Focus, which many uh, might have known because they are also a public limited. Uh, so I was uh, one among the core team, uh, you know, members uh, of Prime Focus Chennai. So we developed a huge team of 200 people there and, uh, you know, we delivered the, like so many projects, uh, you know, so many domestic projects and uh, I was heading the CG division there. So, but uh, my passion for creating quality content and, uh, you know, working on Hollywood movies and, you know, creating creatures and, uh, you know, interesting environments and stuff that was never, uh, uh, you know, fulfilled because uh, back then, uh, you know, not even back then, you know, even now it is a very big uh, thing for Indian cinema. Uh, but, you know, there is no uh, such budget or, uh, you know, timeline for our people to work on. Uh, that kind of interesting content. So I realized that uh, working on domestic projects is not going to help me out uh, to fulfill my passion. So I had to work on an international uh, uh, film or company so that I can work on you know Hollywood films. So that that is what I was like uh, after, and I was um, <clears throat> playing uh, for you know a lot of uh, international studios, and I got shortlisted uh, by by a major uh, studio. And then uh, I was about to join there, but you know, the, due to some visa delays, I I had a gap uh, for which uh, you know I have to wait for this visa and all. So I thought, okay, let me do something on my own till then. You know, like the visa gets uh, you know approved. So that is how the journey of Phantom started actually. So it was like never intended to be a company, or I was never intended to be an entrepreneur. But uh, uh, once I started, uh, you know pitching on projects and uh, started interacting with the clients. And then I realized that I have this gift for, you know, uh, you know, business as well, you know, so uh, I, I was able to really immediately uh, relate to uh, any, uh, you know, directors or producers, you know, relate to their content. I can, uh, you know, easily impress them you know, I can uh, easily break through uh, new projects. I was able to, uh, you know, bag in any projects that I was uh, given an opportunity to uh, meet with. So if there is a meeting, then uh, definitely I was able to bag that project. So that's when I realized that we, you know, I can do much better in my life, you know, rather than working for somebody else. So I, uh, you know, started uh, Phantom FX uh, by 2011. 2010 and we unofficially uh, you know started and uh, working on some projects 2011 we officially registered and then uh, uh, you know from there actually i recruited four people uh, you know four freshers and i trained them and that's how everything started we started in a very small studio apartment and a uh, small house and uh, from there you know we slowly uh, you know grew up and then, uh, you know, we got into a domestic market and then we got into international market and, uh, you know, worked on a lot of uh, interesting projects. And now uh, we are around 600 people. Uh, we have offices in three cities in India and also we have offices in uh, three countries uh, as of now, Los Angeles, Vancouver and uh, Dubai as well. And uh, we are about to open up an office in uh, London as well. As we speak, you know, like uh, the next week, I'm going uh, to, you know, initiate that process actually. So that's a very small brief about uh, Phantom and Phantom's journey. Great, so, great, sir. <laughs> very inspiring story, starting from uh, very humble beginnings. Thank Thanks you. for that. Thank you. Uh, so, so I have a few uh, business-related questions. So, can you explain us like what is the process of onboarding a client? Is it like we approach them? or based on our initial work they approach or it is a uh, like uh, combined thing uh, both ways uh, yeah so when when it comes to a new client or a new project uh, how it works is like uh, um, you know before i was the phase of 
the company and I will be like uh, interacting with most of the clients. But now, now we have, you know, people, you know, working on different dimensions on uh, handling business and, uh, you know, interacting with clients, you know, so there are so many departments uh, involved uh, with the, the bidding process and everything. Uh, but how it usually works is like uh, a client approaches with a script if it is if it is in the very beginning that is uh, you know we call it pre production production and post production so the pre production is the phase where uh, everything starts the concepts you know the scripting stage the idea starts uh, so that is where it is uh, that's what it is called uh, previous and uh, sorry pre production and uh, there is the next uh, phase uh, which is production where everything is being shot in camera so that is called production and uh, the next phase is post production where you know the complete shooting and everything is done and uh, you know this comes uh, the, uh, the the short footage comes for the next process that is visual effects or sound mix or uh, dts mix or whatever you know editing and everything so that is uh, what is called post production phase so we uh, we are you know like our execution phases in post production uh, but, uh, you know, to execute something successfully in post-production, we have to be involved from the pre-production stage itself. So we have to be there in the planning stage itself. So uh, what happens uh, with the uh, VFX heavy films is uh, people come to us uh, with, the, with the script itself, uh, probably a producer or executive producer. They will come to us uh, saying that, you know, we are planning to, you know, do this movie and uh, you know this is the script and uh, we'll be introduced to the director and we'll have interaction with the director saying okay we'll read through the script and we'll you know uh, highlight uh, certain areas that we think which is not possible to shoot physically and then uh, we present it to them saying okay this is these are the areas that we have figured out as visual effects you know intensive areas or visual effects support is needed and then uh, the director goes through it and uh, then they you know uh, then the creative process starts. Actually, we will be having a lot of discussions and uh, planning, uh, you know, uh, how the shot can be done or is it, you know, going to be very costly. So all these discussions will happen and uh, we'll come to a conclusion of like, okay, this is how we are going to do it. And then, uh, you know, based on that, the bidding uh, process will start. So we will, uh, you know, initially break it, break it down into scenes and uh, how many uh, shots per scenes and uh, how many tasks per shot is what we break down. And uh, so when we break down it into tasks, so we'll know that how many man days is going to get involved in each and every task. So based on the man days, we have a man day costing for each and every department. So we apply that uh, to the bidding sheets and uh, then we uh, you know come to uh, you know budget and uh, we give them a, a um, approximate uh, a budget uh, based on the scripts. So not every time, you know, the script is completely adapted into a film. So there will be like uh, some changes, uh, some uh, practical difficulties of shooting something or somebody, uh, somebody's call sheet is not available. So they have to do slight changes in the uh, script, you know. So, you know, some unforeseen uh, circumstances will have come. So, you know, there are, op so we call this as, uh, uh, you know, assumption bid because this we assume that uh, you know this project is going to this much of cost and uh, you know what happens is like most of the time it is 90 25 percentage accurate this assumption uh, bid and uh, based on this bid uh, we will uh, you know uh, draft a contract and we will say okay this is what we have assumed and this is what we have bid for so anything apart from this uh, which is adding up or which is getting uh, detected will you know um, as per you know the, the task it will be added or uh, detected so that's how the contract will be drafted and once the contract is done we will uh, start working on the you know the planning and ideation and you know con uh, concept sketches and uh, stuff like that so once uh, the pre production stage is done then we will be uh, uh, on set with this uh, director and uh, crew we will have our vfx supervisor who is uh, who will be supervising the whole, uh, you know, the VFX portions of uh, shooting and everything. So uh, we will, uh, you know, we will have a, uh, we will be like uh, monitoring everything. We will be supervising and also monitoring the budgets as well. Like, so if there is anything 
which comes new <laughs> from what we have built, we immediately uh, you know escalate that to the producer and say that okay, this has this is not in the bid and uh, this is being added now or this is uh, you know going to cost you more because we assume that this is going to be shot in this way, but this is being shot in another way. Uh, you know stuff like that. You know so that kind of conversations and everything. So after the shoot is done, uh, once the edit is uh, you know it will come to the editing table. So once the edit is locked. We will know the exact task and uh, mandates. I know uh, finalized. So based on that, we will again do a you know we will again we will revisit the bidding, and uh, the bidding will be uh, you know probably if they have removed something, the cost might come down. If if they have added something, the cost might go up. Then uh, you know there will be a, a random added, and then uh, we'll. Uh, Add up something on the contract, and then uh, you know the post production work starts. And once the uh, work is completed, uh, you know we have set up milestones, uh, you know, for payments and all. So uh, you know, based on the milestones, uh, we'll be uh, collecting the money. So like uh, when when we sign up, we'll be getting an upfront, and uh, each and every uh, milestone achievement, we will have some kind of payment breakdown. And uh, before delivery, almost uh, you know ninety percentage of uh, payment we would have recovered. Uh, Eighty to ninety percentage will always uh, recover. And uh, towards the delivery, against delivery, we uh, usually uh, collect the rest of the money. So some a uh, couple of uh, clients like Netflix or Amazon, you know, like they have an uh, uh, you know term that saying you know uh, we we will be settled when uh, you know. Before the what do you say um, the OTT release, so you know like a couple of uh, clients like that who has very good reputation in the market and uh, they are very reliable, so we give them a bit of credit for them. So other than that, uh, this business is uh, you know completely uh, based on uh, you know payment against delivery only. So uh, that's how we operate. Right, right, sir. So, uh, can you explain us like what is the general timeline for the so, like for the VFX uh, uh, in in number of so days or months if you can elaborate? And second thing is what is generally a budget which is allocated for the VX, VFX part as a percentage or any specific number if you can share. And uh, uh, along with that, what are the general trends are you seeing in the industry right now from when you started say 10, 12 years back? What used to be the budget for the VFX and right now what it is, and if you can compare between the Bollywood and Hollywood. Yeah, I I, I kind of didn't get your first question. The pipeline. What yeah, is... yeah. Uh, I mean, do do the client assign you the specific timeline that uh, he says like I want this work to be done in next fifteen days, next next one month or next two months? So any fixed yeah. timelines are given. Yeah, you want to know. Yeah. So when it comes to that kind of uh, you know pipeline, you know like uh, it depends on uh, the clients. Of course, you know like uh, for example, if it is a Disney show or a Marvel show, you know they come up with a deadline only. Like they will say that this is the day that they actually work reverse, saying you know they will fix the. Of course, it will be a reasonable deadline. Uh, they will fix the deadline and then uh, you know uh, include uh, as many vendors as it needs. You know like for example. In a movie like Avengers, uh, there will be at least uh, 30, 20 to 30, uh, you know, vendors, special effects vendors working on uh, from small scenes to, you know, huge chunk of scenes. So that's how it works. So there are a uh, few major uh, studios who always be a part of it. And the uh, rest of the studios will be, you know, chosen uh, by the client as per their uh, specialization. So that's how it works. Uh, so the timeline differs between uh, anywhere between uh, two months to one and a half years for completing any uh, visual effects uh, high movies. Before that, it is like around three years and all we, we took uh, to complete a visual effects movie. Now, you know, technology has too much evolved and also, uh, you know, there are uh, many other uh, people, uh, you know, many other competitions also there. So there are so many other uh, visual effects houses also there. So you know, they have the option to split up the job nowadays. So the maximum timeline is one and a half years and uh, probably, uh, uh, you know, the, the minimum time will be one month to two months, depending on the scale of the work. And uh, in terms of budgets, uh, 
you know that, that that's what i said like you know it, it depends on what kind of work it is you know for example if it is a romantic comedy movie there is no need for heavy visual effects so it will be a very small work you know with the basic uh, set extensions or you know small uh, uh, you know stuff here and there and uh, probably uh, uh, if it is a huge visual effects movie like avengers or transformers then it is a heavy uh, stuff so uh, you know so we cannot say that this will be the budget for a visual effects movie but it depends on the kind of work that will be involved so there are millions of dollars being spent uh, in uh, high visual effects uh, content and also on a, on an average uh, i would say probably between uh, 1 crore to you know 200 300 crores of budget is what is in a, on an average uh, visual effects movie is being done Oh, okay, so so those must be two three hundred crores must be the the international uh, probably the movies. International uh, VFX heavy movies, yes. In India, what is the maximum spend which I have done till now? If you can give the ballpark number, like the ten crores. India 20, 20, 20. probably, uh, you know, in Bahubali they spent around seventy crores, eighty crores, I think, uh, and uh, in Bahubali two also somewhere around eighty crores. Uh, brahmastra i was told that it was 100 crores but uh, okay. i'm not sure about it yeah okay okay so so uh, my related question was like what kind of a trends are you seeing in this industry compared to when you started your career 10 uh, 12 yeah, years back yeah 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 because see i told you right you know the initial stages i was not uh, happy working with domestic projects because uh, there was the creative content is very less and people were struggling to make money from movies because uh, you know there was no uh, you know market like ott nowadays or uh, you know uh, satellite is not there you know they only they were like completely dependent on uh, screeners only so you know the the market was small and they don't know how to sell abroad so nowadays you know all this market has opened up uh, um, a movie like rrr is uh, widely uh, you know received very well uh, throughout the globe and uh, that actually made uh, a way for a lot of indian uh, movies so now they are like daringly <coughs> investing uh, hundreds of crores uh, in movies uh, you know being made in india because they know that they can sell it out you know and make profit out of it so that is a huge difference nowadays you know because uh, after bahubali and all you know like uh, people are uh, you know uh, people understood that a vfx heavy content can be sold in you know so with such high value and uh, rrr has marked its uh, you know so you know people are nowadays coming up with uh, very interesting content and scripts so that they know that they can make the money out of it also so that's right. how the business has changed so right right and as you said like uh, uh, like for bahubali 1 and 2 probably 70 80 crores i have spent for each uh, each uh, part and then 100 crores about for the brahmastra so out of that 100 crores how much pie you get or some other player in the industry get do they get two scenes three scene five scene how it is determined it is based on the final uh, movie producer he decides it based on your capabilities or you have to bid for various uh, uh, scenes and then they decide how how does that uh, process work so if you can explain yeah so it depends on uh... the deadlines of course you know like uh, because uh, if the makers wants to release the movie in another year uh, then uh, you know it has uh, hundreds of thousands of shots and then you know not one vendor can handle it so at that time you know like they will uh, you know for example if phantom if they come to phantom phantom uh, specializes in creatures and uh, 3d cgi environments and you know high end high end uh, vfx work and uh, not every movie will need uh, uh, not every movies scenes will need high end vfx work for example even in rrr if you take uh, a, 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 a small song sequence or whatever you know like it doesn't need that kind of visual effects maybe so or a tiger chase that needs a high end visual effects so it depends on uh, even in the same movie itself there will be scenes which has uh, you know low low uh, vfx uh, need and the higher vfx need so it depends on that so you know when when there is complicated work people come to us so that you know the uh, work is awarded you know depending on the nature of the work so that way uh, you know like uh, when when you say bahubali we worked on uh, three major sequences uh, you know at that time we were also occupied with something else so that is what we were able to pick up 
and uh, rrr actually we were not able to do because we were uh, doing something else and uh, so at uh, end of the day you know uh, the supervisor is a very good friend of mine so he was stuck with something and he uh, he requested me to uh, pick up something you know so we uh, ended up doing one sequence in that so that's how it works the relationship you know it based on uh, relationship and uh, throughout uh, what you have done you know the past track records and the delivery and you know so based on that you will be awarded so it is somewhere between uh, 10 to 50 percentage of uh, you know um, uh, films uh, work will be awarded to us and okay. there are many uh, movies that we have completely uh, you know worked also okay. like uh, for example uh, recent uh, recently we finished a movie called beast which was uh, done in uh, you know south it was a it was a production of sun network so we completely uh, handled the visual effects for that movie you know and there are other movies also happening like that so you know that that kind of work also we do and uh, in, in uh, very visual effects uh, uh, you know dependent uh, movies uh, awarding the complete project might you know not feel right for the producer because right. you know, it will be just solely depending on one company and if something goes wrong then everything will go wrong so they will uh, you know preferably they will uh, prefer to work on three or four companies uh, for one movie so that's how it works here also right right and uh, as you main, mentioned about the characters into a particular scene so i was reading the con calls also uh, historically what uh, you have been uh, discussing so uh can you explain like you have created a say xyz character a tiger or a deer or uh, any particular character so so that uh, ip stays with the company with the phantom um actually uh, if it is a generic model uh, th that that is with us the asset as asset is with us so we will be using it on different movies so once the asset is done, that is actually uh, a lot, uh, saving a lot of money. So also that asset will attract more projects also. So for example, if I'm working on a project where I'm, I'm creating a tiger and uh, I would have charged the client for creating that asset already. And uh, if there is another project coming with a need for tiger, I can reuse this tiger there. Uh, so unless and until a producer specifically demands that there is something you know about this tiger which we have created, uh, for our own project and that that should be having an IP of theirs or something like that then uh, you know based on their requirement and our uh, you know comfortability we will uh, we can agree upon that but till now such situation haven't arised um, you know sometimes some clients like Netflix they ask for the asset to be delivered so you know in that cases we are also uh, you know we can also use that asset but we will be like uh, handing over the asset because they have paid for it. So we will be handing over that asset to them as well. So maybe in the future projects, they will be using it uh, with some other different vendor also. So that is also happening. So that's, the, that's right. how it works. Right. right. Uh, now coming to the, the comparison between the US industry and Indian industry, like uh, we have seen a massive shift from uh, US to India in 2000 in IT industry because of the labor arbitrage. So is it a similar thing which is happening or which probably already started or going to happen in future because uh, of the labor arbitrage compared to India and uh, other countries? Exactly, exactly the same thing is happening uh, right now. That is the similar situation of how the IT boomed from 90, 90s to 2000. Uh, right. That's a similar situation happening here uh, with visual effects also. So, so many uh, international companies are looking at India because uh, in India we have uh, cheaper labor and good creative people and uh, good infrastructure and uh, you know the country supports the business very well and the communication everything is very good you know it is very hard to work with Chinese people I have you know in the past I have tried outsourcing uh, some creative work you know they are very good with doing stuff but you know uh, it, you can never explain them something and make them understand and work as a team, you know. So that is very hard, uh, especially when it comes to creativity. You know, every you know every versions they submit, there will be some director comments or any uh, you know specific notes that we want to convey, and it's very hard for them to understand. You know, like it is not just about the communication, but 
it is a very major cultural difference as well exactly no? right yeah, and uh, that didn't work out for uh, many uh, western and you know countries so they are specifically it's looking at uh, india only right 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 and uh, india have a history that we have done very well historically into the service industry yes uh, i mean the it part uh, so so i think it is a replica with the different yes, exactly 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 that is what is happening yes. so so if you can co- like uh, describe us or elaborate us like what is the per uh, our man uh, what what like the clients charge or what they offer so uh, term, approximately we charge between 10 to 12000 rupees per uh, man day Uh, day, okay yeah uh, it is a it, it, it is based on uh, the client and their affordability and the quality of the content right uh, so this is for a domestic or a low budget uh, international film so if it is a high budget uh, international film it varies between uh, 14000 to 20000 rupees per, per man day. okay 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 so the definitely and the companies who are charging 30000 rupees also per man day. so okay. uh, you know the yeah so that is that depends on uh, the kind of uh, project and uh, so we are slowly moving towards that only yeah. so are you seeing that shift already happening like the international uh, big producers and the uh, studios are coming to india to outsource their work yeah yeah it is already happening uh, we ourselves uh, are part of lot of international movies already and also uh, there are uh, you know major visual effects houses a couple of major visual effects houses already opened up shops in india and uh, they are successfully uh, you know delivering uh, projects and uh, it has proven to be a very successful model for them also so uh, that is what is happening like uh, this is a very uh, interestingly growing industry here in india and and what do you think about the quality part because always your customer looks for that particular quality or the talent or the creative uh, creativity so so are we able to deliver as as a as a india i am asking not specifically to the phantom uh, or like that is uh, the that is on the improvement curve like we are slowly learning and adopting what are the requirements in terms of quality we were able to meet whatever the client wants and uh, of course as i said it it always depends on uh, how much uh, you can afford right you know i can uh, i can buy a you know a small car you know with the money i have or i can buy an a bmw with the money i have right. so how much i can afford is what is always about so uh, a disney project always have a, you know comes with a bigger budget and they comes with a bigger expectation as well and uh, you know based on that they will have a good timeline also to work on it so you know so uh, it depends on the client and the you know money actually yeah Uh, right 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 uh can you can you explain about the competitive scenario currently into the this industry because uh, probably it might be the early days uh, uh, of this industry i am not sure but once the once the businesses will come to know that this is the profitable business everyone will start to enter into that thing and that is how uh, the lot of competition will come so the first thing is what is the currently competitive structure according to you second thing is how you trying to differentiate yourself with respect to newer entrants and uh, take the bigger pie of uh, uh, the market share yeah so um, this is actually a different field okay uh, you know what, what i would say is like uh, so there is two things about uh, visual effects uh, business here there is a service uh, a process oriented business and there is a creative uh, right. business so uh, a process oriented business uh, you know the profit margins are of course they are small right uh, but the quantum of work is high the margin is small so uh, almost 95% is 90% of visual effects companies who call themselves visual effects houses here in india they are into this process oriented uh, you know service actually so it is not creative it, uh, it is like uh, you know you learn the typewriter uh you know to operate a typewriter uh, typewriter and learn typewriting in uh, probably 3 uh, months and you be- become an expert in 6 months and in 12 uh, months you can even you know type without uh, you know looking at the typewriter so right. that's how it works so uh, this also same you know like there is a, a process oriented uh, stuff that you know uh, the more you practice the more uh, professional you become so that that is what uh, you know people are doing it Uh, here in india like almost 90 percentage of the companies but uh, phantom right from the inception we were into the creative side of business okay uh, like because 
since i was so passionate about you know creating and uh, you know uh, being part of all these interesting uh, movies and creating stuff i never wanted to become a non creative person or non creative business so right from the inception the growth level was slow because you know we have to have a creative track record we should have a very uh, you know a hardcore team and hardcore pipeline and everything so it took me some time to you know slowly establish it and uh, you know establish our name and uh, now phantom is uh, uh, rated among top 3 companies in visual effects in india uh, so you know it, it took us this much of time to establish right. that level so now we are you know slowly pushing the same in uh, international market as well so now we are getting established everywhere you know like uh, people are uh, you know uh, people knows who phantom is and they are you know like um you know giving projects and slowly we are getting into major uh, you know we recently uh, got approved by disney and uh, we got uh, audited by paramount and all so slowly we uh, started getting into all this uh, you know major uh, houses as well so the, the when when it comes to the competitors that is that is the challenge for everyone you know like uh, it is not like uh, you have a lot of money and then you can start a visual effects business it, it will not work that way right uh so for example there is one competitor here in chennai chennai itself like uh, they started in a similar timeline but they are into uh, the process oriented uh, business correct uh then uh, at a point of time they realized that it, the the margin is low and they wanted to move into creative right uh, they they uh, started uh, trying to do something in, in 2017 itself and uh, till now they are trying like more than yeah, there is a learning curve i can understand it, more of so a... it is not about learning curve it is okay. about uh, you know who runs the business as well okay so right. you should have the understanding of how yes, it yes. works first of all right. so till now they haven't been part of any uh, you know creative process and they are still trying to do something and uh, so many failures and they want they started up something in mumbai and then they couldn't do it and then uh, they closed up but they are actually making a lot of profit here in chennai but they were not able to do you know beyond that in creative uh, space actually okay. so it 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 all uh, depends on uh, who's running the business and uh, the the understanding of how everything works and uh, you know it 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 actually really matters right it doesn't mean that uh, you know or if you have money and uh, you have the right people on your team then it is possible exactly so and assembling the right people right creative minded people and all those creative minded people have to align at some point that right, is very, right. very uh, tricky you know like uh, it is not like um, you know like i have like uh, high end sophisticated machines and anybody who sits on that machine can operate it it is it doesn't work like that right. so you you uh, assemble avengers crew where you know everybody have their own uh, superpowers and together that superpower you make this one uh, you know uh, superhuman No, so it is like that you know like so uh, you know like uh, this one person should know how to connect all these dots right right so that is the that is where i think uh, many are trying and failing and that is where i think uh, phantom has succeeded because uh, i myself uh, is a hardcore technician and i trained uh, so many people myself and uh, you know i i choose the right people in my team and uh, the way the phantom culture has been developed right from the beginning because uh phantom was never behind uh, making money from the beginning you know like we were right. we wanted to create uh, content and we wanted to enjoy what we do you know so it is all about that and uh, so we created a culture where people love to work for phantom and uh, love what they are doing at phantom so that way what happened is like uh, over the period uh, our core team member that is uh, when i say core team you know we've been uh, uh, we have around uh, 80 people of core team uh, members who been traveling with this for more than 8 years okay so uh, that's the success of phantom actually so with these uh, 70 80 people we were able to uh, you know build this uh, 600 uh, um, hardcore tree team and uh, we are still growing you know because we had a strong core team and the understanding of how everything works and uh, understanding of the you know the importance of the pipeline and how you know why uh, you know everything is needed and uh, you know it was like planned everything was planned right from the inception of the company like uh, when we were like three four people sitting in the same room i i uh, you know insist people to mail things you know right. my, my my team will ask you know we are sitting next to each other why should we mail you know we can 
simply uh, you know talk to the other guy and ask for that right you know but i said no you know see that is how we have to operate you know like and that is how you can be organized and the next day probably he forgets that you told him this and you know and nobody knows that you have you have done right you know like right. so i wanted everything to be organized right from the beginning so that is how the company was built on actually so you know like so when everything is organized obviously the you know the growth of the organization will uh, you know definitely will happen right so that is how everything happened and uh, we built a very strong robust uh, pipeline uh, at one instance you know like uh, a very huge major uh, uh, hollywood studio uh, outsourced just uh, as a creative work and uh, they said like we have a impossible task which needs to be done in a week time and uh, you know we cannot pull it off because it's a very short timeline and uh, they don't have that kind of manpower also at that time like available uh, so they said like we know that this is this is impossible but uh, you know can we do that is what they asked and we successfully pulled it off and uh, when i went and met them in los angeles they like they were like saying how did you pull it off you know because uh, it, we thought that is not possible and uh, you guys delivered it on time you know so that is how you know the robust the pipeline that we have created i'm not saying that we have outdone something that hollywood is uh, hollywood has done but i'm saying that we have built something similar to what their infra and our infra is so that is how you know very well organized we are and uh, that is how the total pipeline is working here so we have our own technology department where we are creating a lot of automated softwares and tools you know to uh, make the productivity more uh, you know under control and all so that's how everything works at phantom and uh, i think that is what you know the success uh, uh, you know that's how i think we we've been able to success everything yeah right, right. so as we were discussing about the team and people so can you tell uh, tell us like uh, what is the team size uh, right now do we have and what are the plans going ahead yeah around 600 people right now okay and uh, we are aiming to become at least 1000 to 1200 people towards uh, uh, march uh, sorry Ma- not march 2024 june or something uh, so that's the that's the you know target that we have so based on that we will be working on the projects in flow also right and how easy or difficult is to recruit these people because as you are saying like it is more of a creative work and all so so like uh, uh, how easy or difficult it is uh, to onboard the uh, the employees um nowadays I, i you know you know right you know like uh, how the 90s and 2 k is in it industry was like there was right. like, so much of poaching so much okay. of uh, you know uh, resource shortage and then every college started uh, you know educating computer science right, exactly and every house had like four engineers in their home you know so that is how i think but you know the only challenge here is like not everybody can become an artist here so out okay. of 100 you know you can say 50 uh, engineers are there but out of 100 you will say only one artist so that is the catch here you know like not everybody can uh, do it or not everybody can learn and uh, be successful on this you know because as i said there is this process oriented uh, business in vfx that probably uh, people can choose and uh, uh you know uh, make successful out of it but uh, when it comes to creativity you should drive it uh, really be creative and uh, you should have that sense for uh, you know photography cinematography art and colors and everything so then only you can uh, be a successful person so not everybody can it can do it but of course you know with proper training and uh, right. passion and creativity you know definitely we can pull it off so that is there you know and that is one catch uh, in the positive side also and that is what the negative side as well because we are uh, you know running shortage of uh, artists here so right. what we do is like uh, we uh, do campaigns in different colleges so okay. every college we do campaign and we pick people you know we showcase them what we are doing we uh, spark that interest with these people like saying okay see this is what we have done and you can do also you know you can do similar things as well and so when people uh, see that you know with you know people who have uh, that interest to create something they come to us you know they say like uh, you know we want to do this or you know what kind of courses we can take so we guide them <laughs> and uh, you know we uh, we provide internships to people and then uh, you know uh, from the lot we pick uh, the good uh, you know candidates and uh, we are uh, regularly uh, campaigning in arts colleges fine arts colleges yeah. and uh, you know we are uh, yeah recruiting at least 30 to 50 people every year 
So what is the generally mix of these people right now? How, would, how much would be the artist as a percentage or how much will be technical people and how we uh, progress uh, from here on? Is there any some related percentage? 20% we are the creators, 30% we are the, the technical people, something like that? Yeah, in Phantom, actually, uh, we are 60% uh, of creators. Okay. And uh, twenty percentage of managers and twenty percentage of process oriented. Uh, uh, Understood. Yeah. And and uh, what are the trends in our attrition? Are you seeing like the attrition rates are eight point nine last year's attrition rate. And this is a general uh, thing into no, industry. No, actually, uh, it is. We don't have anything to compare. Culture. It is because of Phantom's culture. We were able to control it into eight point nine because. Uh, okay. Um, a couple of uh, uh, foreign companies where my friends are working, I uh, I was told that they had like 20 percentage of attrition last year for them. Oh, okay. So we were about to like we were able to because it's a very uh, you know uh, high tight period actually last year. You know, like so much of poaching, so much of recruitment was happening. Right. So uh, like uh, even at that phase, we were able to control our attrition rate to uh, 8.9 percentage. Right. So it is because of Fanders culture only, you know, like people want to work here because they, they, uh, they are treated well. They are, you know, their uh, work is respected and, uh, and uh, foremost thing is uh, the work is being more creative than right. just being a pixel pusher. You know, even uh, the MNC whoever has come from abroad uh, to here, they have set up their shops, but all the creativity and all the creative decision and decision makers are sitting abroad. Right, they're just, right. uh, you know, doing all the plan and everything and they are sending stuff for execution here. So it is like not, you you cannot use your creativity, but you have to rely on somebody's creativity and you have to just work on whatever the direction they are showing here. So that is what is happening. So, you know, uh, when people get the taste of working at Phantom, you know, they were like, you know, we have this because, you know, we are working on projects right from the scratch, you know, like from the scripting stage to, you know, planning and execution. So everything is here. So, you know, people love working here because they have that opportunity to, uh, you know, experiment things and, uh, you know, the, the, their creativity, creativity can be used at the fullest. Right, right. Uh, and uh, like uh, I was going through your presentation and the con call. So you had mentioned about we have a plan in future to enter into the gaming industry also. So how similar or different it is compared to the VFX on the movie side and what are the plans on that side? Uh, so the, for the gaming, actually, we are already into the, uh, we are already working on supporting a lot of gaming studios, but we are not creating games as of okay. now. Uh, you know, like uh, for creating games, that is actually a different, uh, you know, ball game altogether, but we are slowly moving towards that because we have a very strong technology team. And we have a very strong creative team as well. So for gaming, this two has to be combined, and uh, you know, uh, this two, the combination of two is actually the gaming uh, uh, industry. So that is why we are actually slowly moving towards, and we are already supporting a lot of uh, gaming uh, companies uh, by providing concept arts or uh, you know, creating uh, asserts and stuff like that. Okay. 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 Uh, I have some financial secretary questions also. Yeah, we have our uh, CFO, Mr. Rajnikanth here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he can uh, answer your question on that actually. Sure. So, Rajni sir? Uh, how much order book we currently have and what are the, like, uh, how much uh, are in progress or just, you know, in a discussion uh, phase? Uh, see, as of now, currently, uh, 65 to 70 crore order books are available to be executed. Okay. Uh, we are we are expecting the other pipeline can be added, so okay. hopefully uh, we can able to get an order book of uh, at the earliest. I would say maybe within one or two months we can add another ten to fifteen crores. Okay. And we are expecting uh, for this financial year uh, with the order book of almost one thirty one forty, but we can able to complete uh, successfully uh, out of that eighty percent. Balance twenty percent might spill over to the next financial year. Understood. So, so next question is uh, for both of you. Like these results were like uh, very very good results, but there has been an increasing in uh, the receivables part. Uh, so, can you explain us what were these receivables about? And uh, generally, as uh, servers mentioning that uh, like uh, most of the payments we collect upfrontly 
uh before uh, before that movie uh, get released or something so so like why uh, the receivables are on a higher higher end this this year yeah let me clarify that sir see any of the project that there is a milestone uh, billing to be happen and mm-hmm. payment has to be collected accordingly okay right so if you see uh, for example uh, any one of the project we do collected 15 to 20% it depends upon the size of the project we are collecting upfront advance right and subsequent to that there is a timeline wherein we will have to uh, give out i um, mean output from our end and we are going to raise the bill based on the percentage of completion okay so generally customer will take uh, in order to compl- i mean make the payment of uh, based on the percentage of completion between 30 to 45 days timeline but however uh, while getting the final output from our end they will have to clear the payment that is the final output uh, the percentage might be like 5 to 10% which might be left over okay once we raise that to 5 to 10% then they will have to make the full payment whatever be the outstanding is there so in a way if you see that the books will always have that uh, uh, some milestone payment having a timeline of 30 to 45 days that's right. what the receivables so we have in the got 100% advance and then do the work it's not like that advance has come during the time of engaging the contract okay and okay. subsequent payments are as per milestone but however uh, uh, once we get the 100% money from our 100% outstanding then only we can able to release the output or we can say that the final result otherwise okay. they can't able to uh, complete their task in terms of release the movie movie or ott platform whatever it is currently for the fy23 we have about 15 crores of receivables so for that uh, the project has not given to the client i mean the product has not delivered it is with us only i mean till we get the, the final final product has not given to the client these are all the milestone payments okay. uh, as of now out of that 15 crores 13 crores were collected only 3 is pending which we are expecting in a couple of days uh, to complete that so up uh, that that must have done after march right as of 31st yeah. march it is shown to be yeah. yeah okay okay great uh, uh uh coming back to the vijay sir uh, like i would like to know what is the kind of a market size or opportunity size are we seeing and what kind of a growth are we looking for in next 3 to 3 to 5 years and what kind of a capabilities are we building for the same no as i said i know this is 90s uh... Uh, IT industry right now. So the you know, like uh, a recent survey and uh, a survey says you know government survey it says that we have barely scratched the surface of uh, the whole business of digital effects and animation gaming industry, which is around uh, uh, you know we have scratched like around five percentage of the whole business India. So there are like ninety five percentage still out. Mm-hmm. So that is what I think uh, is the future potential for uh, India. and uh, you know that is where we are coming in and uh, being an established visual effects house already uh, from india who approved and has a very good uh, track record in uh, delivering stuff with uh, utmost quality uh, we have recently uh, you know uh, signed up with netflix uh, uh, exclusive partner deal uh, which uh, we are the first indian company to do with netflix okay, uh, okay. so you know like so uh that's the way it is moving forward uh so i think uh, uh you know like uh, and also we are doing uh, similar deals with other ott platforms and uh, major uh, studios as well because everybody are on the you know everybody are creating lot of content because after uh, the pandemic the rise of ott as you know exactly has been like uh, tremendously uh, huge and uh, you know like uh, there is a huge potential in ott market everybody realized that Right. after the pandemic and uh, so there are like so many new ott platforms coming and uh, you know there are, everybody needs their own content to be created so there are so many content being created in the market and uh, when the, when there is so many content being created then of course you know the post production demand is also higher so uh, the production houses are actually uh, behind the uh, you know visual effects companies and uh, post production houses uh you know expecting their uh, services actually so the demand actually has created uh, you know a lot of uh, money flow for us and as well uh, the budget is also like uh, from the previous years you know it has raised actually considerably so okay. i am seeing this as a very uh, healthy pattern growing 
and uh, towards the next uh, two or three years you know the phantoms uh, uh, vision is to go bigger and become a very uh, you know a huge competitor for bigger uh, um, with, with bigger uh, clients like disney and uh, warner brothers everybody in the scope so we are actually planning for the next three years we will be one among the you know heavy weight uh, contenders for visual effects uh, in the global arena so that is the vision and uh, we are already uh, on the right track you know like we have set up all our uh, uh, you know the track records if you see you know the deliverables and everything is like uh, going great and that's why it comes to you know uh, sign up a exclusive partner deal with uh, us you know and also last year we got a couple of uh, you know before going public actually we got a couple of major uh, hollywood uh, studios offers to uh, you know acquire us actually okay, so great. people start recognizing our value but you know the right time i i didn't take that decision to sell anything <laughs> before because now uh, we've been uh, you know uh, going in a different uh, vertical actually altogether so right. uh, you know i think uh, we have so much of potential uh, in our way and uh, that is what the vision of the company as well you know to become a global player and uh, for that i am actually strengthening the leaders uh, of the company i am grooming a lot of leaders from the team itself and also i am hiring uh, you know a lot of leaders with a lot of business experience a lot of uh, supervisorial experience who are like creatively uh very good you know all around the globe we are uh, recruiting people you know so uh, the team is expanding when the leaders team expand obviously uh, you know so that is what the plan is and also i am uh, you know constantly working on the technology side as well so uh, we are you know improving our uh, you know we are strengthening our technology uh, back end by you know creating a lot of uh, softwares and tools you know doing a lot of automated things and uh, recently we are uh, into ai as well so uh, you know using ai we are uh, you know trying to cut down a lot of uh, you know manual uh, work that was being done before and all so right. Right. so that is how we are moving forward and uh, i strongly believe that we will definitely be able to achieve you know we have a clear plan for the next 5 years what we are going to do so based on that uh, you know like we are moving forward and everything is going great actually right. as per plan yeah so i have just few more questions i won't take your much of your time but like uh, just want like to have some clarity so right now as you mentioned we have about 600 employees so like if you can name uh, one or two player in india who are the leaders in this segment which uh, which you want to aspire to be going ahead which have a more of a focus on a creative part uh, if you can like just uh, because in this industry there is hardly anyone who is listed probably one player which we are tracking but if you can uh, uh, like uh, tell two names uh, who are focusing on a creative part of the work of the vfx you are asking about our competitors who are uh, in the okay who, uh, who are the leaders in the industry yeah in india if you say uh, one is uh, uh, shark khan's uh, company red chilies is there and okay. uh, one is this uh, prime focus uh, right. and uh, you know their uh, subsidiary company called dinen correct yeah okay so uh, yeah so so what is the like nature of relationship relationship with the uh, dinak are they a competitor or a client and uh, do we actually compete? it's a weird you know industry you know like uh, we need each other every time you know like right. uh, you know i have outsourced to them they have outsourced to me because you okay. know see uh i'll be sometime awarded a project which i cannot handle uh, all alone because you know i'll be working on couple of different other project as well and this is one project that i have very good relationship with the director i cannot say no to Sorry. and i'll be like forced to take that project but i won't have the resource immediately and i cannot like hire immediately uh, you know people also for that project and probably after that i will not meet these guys so the best way to do is like uh, take a cut out of it and then force it to the Uh, the best person nearest to you so your, your company you know, is also a good relationship uh, with uh, each other so you know it is like a give and take every every time understood of course we will be bidding on projects there will be conflict of interest for sure uh, but you know there is a mutual understanding and uh, you know everybody understands how this business works right. so uh, you know we don't see us see each other as just a competitor also but also a potential vendor all the time yeah 
right right and what would be the client retention rate sir like if we can measure or if, if there is any way to understand this thing this and this term i almost 80 percentage of our clients are you know in a very uh, good uh, relationship to us okay and what would be our uh, revenue percentage from the top 10 clients roughly um uh, Rajini, sir, you want to answer this question? Uh, sir, top 10 clients, I would say that uh, 70%, 70% of the yeah. revenue. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the coming back to the last question, continuing that, uh, Rajini, sir, about the receivable. Yeah. So, so, is it a nature of business that at the end of the year, we have always a higher receivables because of margin and then they will taper off in upcoming two or three months? Or, or no, 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 no. It, a... It's not like that. It's okay. not like that. Always uh, two months billing will be like in a receivable, sir, wherever the project is ongoing. So there is no particular seasonality or something, right? And uh, uh, Vinoy, sir, what is the the status of our current expansion? We were, we were planning uh, the offices at various locations in Mumbai, in Cochin, and uh, expanding our Chennai office and uh, various things. So, so where are we right now? And uh, uh, what are our targets for FY24? Chennai, we recently, uh, uh, you know, expanded uh, another floor here uh, in the same tower, which is mm -hmm. having around uh, another uh, 175 seats or something like that. Okay. Uh, so, uh, we recently signed up a uh, contract with them for that and uh, uh, the interior work will be uh, starting from next week, probably in another two months or three months time, it will be done. Okay, right. And uh, Mumbai, we are, we... Uh, Three months back, we shifted to a new office. Okay. Three months, I think. Uh, three months, I think. Yeah. So, uh, and Hyderabad, uh, we already started. And uh, we are actually moving to a, a slightly bigger place in the same uh, office space there in Hyderabad. So, we are having around uh, 100 seats right now. But we are moving to another 140 uh, seats uh, in Hyderabad itself. Right, right. And... Oh, uh, I'm not. I'm, I'm the, sorry. The utilization level of uh, the the our employees. Ah, okay, eighty five percentage is what uh, uh, you know, like in the recent uh, three to six months. Okay. Okay. Our utilization level. Uh, we have certain people in bench as well because of uh, enforcing projects coming. Uh, you know, without uh, you know intimation, and also we have few people in bench as well. So probably eighty percentage, eighty five percentage is what our utilization level is. And uh, sir, do we have any plans to go internationally and open our offices over there because it might help our client might need their uh, vendor to be nearer to them? Yeah, yeah, that is that is uh, already in the agenda and that is what we have worked. So uh, recently, uh, we got signed up a small space in Vancouver. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, which I didn't add it in the website because uh, Los Angeles is happening this week or uh, next week. So right. probably we'll be, uh, you know, putting both the address together uh, in the website. So, uh, okay. and uh, UK also, I'm traveling uh, with that agenda only. So we are going to, uh, you know, start up a small studio in UK as well. So we'll be having a small uh, studio set up in Vancouver and UK is the plan. And uh, Los Angeles will be having uh, mostly an administration office. So, so all these offices will be just a front end, or the uh, the execution part will also. As of now, it is as of now it is just a front end. But uh, in Vancouver, we already have started uh, hiring people. Okay. So probably it will have around uh, fifteen to twenty people in a small studio setup. I uh, understood. Understood. Uh, and and the last question to the Rajni sir about the write offs. Uh, uh, like, so do we had we had any kind of write offs historically? What was the nature of it? And uh, how how risky is to collect the receivables which are which are pending? Uh, <laughs> sir, as of now, uh, in the history of Phantom, we have not written off any of the receivables, sir. Okay. Uh, as I was mentioned earlier, uh, without getting without making the hundred percent payment, none of the people will get the out that is final output from our end. So, which means we are pretty much uh, clear that uh, there won't be any uh, situation where we want to write off our revenue. Right, right. Sometimes, sometimes it might get delayed also, but uh, nevertheless, we should get hundred percent payment. Then only we can give the out. So, what is generally the receivable days? Are you are we uh, are we targeting roughly in in, in your company? Uh, except the except the final payment. Rest of the payments are thirty to forty five days. Sir. Okay, so final payment is a bit delayed. What is? No, no, no. Final payment. Once we get the final payment, then only the out will go from our end. 
that that I, I understood that, no no i i mean to say that final payment there is no due dates okay 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 that's okay. an immediate payment okay yeah. okay but but in this case now oh, like the receivable which we were standing so there was some uh, uh, like the de delay or there was particularly uh, higher amount of receivable which we see on the 31st march but is it because of the 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 closure of the financial year that's why we are saying or or how we can explain no no the, this receivables are uh, mounting from february and march invoices okay 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 yeah okay okay fine and you said that like about uh, 13 crores you already received correct correct okay. Okay, great. so thank you very much uh, vinoy sir and uh, rajit ji like it was a very very uh, interesting and in depth session that explained us to um, like every detail about the industry. So, we are looking at the micro cap club, the small and micro size companies, we are looking at their management, we are looking at the different companies, we are looking at the management, we are looking at Value Educator platform, and now the Value Educator Android and iOS app is available, where you can see all the interviews on your mobile, and in this case, you will get a lot of different reports, on various small and micro size companies, or sector related reports, आप यहाँ पे देख सकते हो कि हमने डुकॉल के मैनेजमेंट को होस्ट किया था माधव बाग है या इसके अलावा पार्टी क्रूजर्स है कृष्णा डिफेंस जैसी कंपनीज है और इसके अलावा भी बहुत सारी कंपनीज को हमने वैल्यू एडिकेटर के प्लेटफॉर्म पे होस्ट किया था तो ये जो सारे एक्सक्लूसिव वीडियोस है विद डिटेल इंटरेक्शन विद द मैनेजमेंट वो माइक्रो कैप क्लब मेंबर्स के लिए अवेलेबल है तो यदि आपने माइक्रो कैप क्लब को अब तक ज्वाइन नहीं किया होगा तो इसकी जो लिंक है आपको नीचे डिस्क्रिप्शन में मिल जाएगी और करेंटली माइक्रो कैप क्लब में टू मेंबर्स है एंड इन लास्ट टेन मंथ हमें फोर्टी के रिटर्न मिले हैं Comparatively, you can see the Nifty and Small Cap Index returns here and you can also see what kind of alpha we have created. So this is basically the outcome for the process which we have followed. We get to meet different companies' management, on-ground research, visit the factories' factories, so that we get a lot of detailed understanding of their businesses related. And our micro-cap club members, we also take them with us. So they also understand what is on ground. We will be planning a visit that we will be planning in the June month. So if you have not joined the link in the micro cap club, you will get the link in the description. So you can join it. And currently we are offering extra months on various years packages. So for one year we are giving extra one month. For two years we are giving extra two months free. So until five years. So you can see the details on my website. And joining the micro cap club would be a very good investment for you. तो ऐसे ही अलग अलग वीडियोस देखने के लिए जरूर वैल्यू डिग्रेड चैनल को सब्सक्राइब कीजिए ये वीडियो यदि आपको पसंद आया होगा तो जरूर इसे लाइक कर दीजिए मेरे चैनल को सब्सक्राइब कीजिए और बेल आइकन पे क्लिक कीजिए ताकि ऐसे जो वीडियोस है आपको आगे जाके भी मिलते रहे और मैं हर सैटरडे को ग्यारह बजे माइक्रो एंड स्मॉल साइज की कंपनीज में डिटेल अंडरस्टैंडिंग जो है वो आपके साथ शेयर करता हूँ तो जरूर ये जो वीडियोज है आप कंप्लीट देखिए सो डोंट मिस दिस वीडियोज एट इलेवन एवरी सैटरडे